Previously on my RX-8 drift build, I replaced my broken radiator with a new one, but sadly it was not the Koyu one that I had planned, but it did the job. The Koyu one is coming later on. With my car finally working again, I wanted to test out the RX-8 fan kit that starts the fans earlier to provide more cooling. So in this video, I'm gonna compare my stock temperatures while driving in the city in full summer to the ones with a kit installed. So if you're new to this channel and like to watch RX-8 videos, then consider subscribing. With that said, it's time to start the test. Firstly, I need to get my OBD2 adapter to scan the temperatures. If you don't have one yet, I strongly recommend you get one so you can control what's happening with the car on your phone and when you get a check engine light, you can actually see what's wrong and how serious is it. I'll leave a link to the one I have in the description. Time to start it up and go for a ride. Currently, the outside temperature is 32 degrees Celsius, and after a while, the coolant temperature has already risen to 99 degrees Celsius. Given the outside temperatures and slow speed, this was to be expected. As soon as I slowed down and stopped on the side, temperatures quickly rose to 100 degrees Celsius, and my gauge warning came on. Now that the maximum temperature was established, it was time to head home and test out the fan control kit. So what does this fan triggering kit consist of? Well, we got the trigger itself, which is basically this temperature sensor that detects the temperature of your coolant. And uh, when it detects that the coolant is at 82 degrees Celsius, it opens the fans and they work on max speed, as opposed to the OEM setup where the fans open at 96 degrees Celsius. So this is one thing. Then we get a couple of stickers from RX-8 Performance some zip ties to zip tie everything in place the instructions on how to install this and two hose clamps first off i have to disconnect the battery next i'll just tilt my hose in case some coolant is trapped inside now it's time to position the sensor and mark the spots where the hose will be cut the instructions say to get as close to the 90 degree angle as possible so i'll cut the hose in this point right here with that done, cut the hose on the marked spots. Remove the big corner hose. Hose clamps are put on each side of the hose and then the sensor is installed with the short negative terminal facing the window and the long cables with relays facing the front bumper. Time to slide both sides of the adapter in the hose and tighten it with my small ratchet. Next up, it's time to release the bolt near the ECU, slide the negative terminal of the sensor on the bolt and then tighten it back on the same place, making sure everything is nice and flush. In order to avoid messy wires in my engine bay, I released the bolt holding my coolant bottle and took out my battery so that I can slide the wires behind the bottle. With that done, it's time to zip tie the wires to the big black harness running across the front metal bar. It's a good idea to protect these wires with a plastic hose to avoid any possible damage. Next, it's time to cut a small hole in my fuse box where I'll slide the wires without them being pinched when putting on the cover. The last thing to do is to take out the two old relays and replace them with the ones from the kit. The replacement is pretty straightforward, but for a better idea on where the fan relays are, you can flip the fuse cover and you'll see a picture of their location. With everything installed, it's time to start up the car. The fans should start working between 82 and 85 degrees Celsius, so let's see what happens. Okay, hitting 97 degrees Celsius. Now the fans... Here we go. The fans started working at 97 degrees Celsius. The kit did not trigger the fans, and if it relies on coolant flow, I have to check if there is any in that hose. And as suspected, the hose is dry as a bone. And also the sensor. The connections are 100% correct, so I think the main issue here is the flow. I could suspect a clock hose or maybe a stock thermostat, although this is not likely. And also, does coolant get pumped in this hose only when the car drives or has a certain RPM range? Hmm. 
Well, I guess we'll find out in my next video. So leave a like if you enjoyed this one, subscribe and let me know in the comments your experience with this mod and what you think is causing the issue on mine.